physics, perpetual motion, free energy, over unity. Hi guys, in this video I am going to sound like a university lecturer, but stay tuned. This is going to be a lot more fun because I'm going to show you some free energy devices that you can create at home for basically nothing, just using ordinary household materials. But before we can go any further, we need to know what is energy? What does it mean? So I pulled out some of my books and I looked up the word energy in the dictionaries. And they pretty much all said it's an ability to do work. Now work in a scientific uh, definition basically means to move an object uh, with a force and make a displacement in a certain direction, also called a vector in uh, mathematical terms. Most people seem to agree when they see work being done, a flow of motion or a flow of something, but uh, it's a little harder to see the definition of the ability to do work. What does that mean? Well, if you look at a pianist, he has the ability to play piano, but if you just look at his face, when he's standing up straight, not in front of the piano, you don't know he has an ability to play piano. Same thing with a ball sitting on a table. You don't know if that has any ability to do work or not until you put it in a situation where it's actually releasing the energy that it has stored. For example, the ball on the table here can be pushed over the edge uh, and you will see that there is quite a bit of energy being released when it falls to the floor and ejects a particle up into the air. From this uh, we can deduce that there are actually two forms of energy. One is where the object is already in motion and being pushed by a force. And the other is an ability or a potential to put objects in motion. But if energy is sort of invisible in some cases, it also opens up the door for lots of other energies that we may not even know about or be aware of. And here's a quote from Richard Feynman, the famous Nobel Prize physicist. He says, quote, It is important to realize that in physics today we have no knowledge what energy is. We do not have a picture that energy comes in little blobs of a definite amount. It is not that way, unquote. So when one of the top scientists in the world says we don't know what energy is, and then you couple that with the fact that scientists now have discovered the universe is expanding and there is something that they call dark energy that causes the universe to expand, you may wonder, well, there's more to know about the universe. Perhaps there are other energies we still haven't been able to capture or measure. Could it not be that space itself has energy or is made of energy and we have yet to discover what it is and how to extract that energy? So all I can say about the definition of energy is that it's simply a mathematical abstract. It really does not have any physical thing, quote unquote, reality. It's just a mathematical human description for motion between physical objects. It's just a convenience in a matter of fact. It's sort of like time itself is not a thing and uh, it's a human abstract or human convenience to measure motion across space. Uh, time is also not a thing and uh, you cannot hold it in your hand or describe it in any other way. So time is just a consecutive sequence of now moments. There is only now, but for some reason we humans think that there is a future and a past, but in reality it's only now with the objects moving around within the now moment. Now we can conclude that uh, 
a group of particles or an object for it to experience energy must be pushed or pulled with some force. The question arises, what or how can we explain the force between two planetary bodies with empty space between? Or how can we explain a radio signal between the moon and the earth and it's generating moving electrons in the antenna here on the earth? Uh, what is the contact force? Now it starts getting strange when you look at the non-contact forces such as the electric force etc. And there is an action at a distance without any contact. But Maxwell in uh, 1873 explained this action at a distance uh, with his famous Maxwell equations as simply a field that has its own uh, medium and can transfer energy and momentum across space and it's just an apparent uh, action at a distance. Uh, the energy is actually going through a medium. But nowadays uh, that's uh, highly uh, debated and uh, there's no agreement between physicists on what's actually going on. Some scientists uh, think that there is no ether, there is no medium and space or vacuum is totally empty but others are saying there is an ether and I frankly personally uh, wonder if space or vacuum is a super cold solid and uh, atomic particles are simply holes spinning around in this uh, super cold medium. So even if there is or isn't a medium in space what is it that pulls or pushes on some objects at a distance without direct contact? And it is too easy just to call it a field of energy. If, for example, space is a super cold matrix, a solid, perhaps the compression of this solid or space and decompression of space is what creates what we think of as energy and it's not really visible to the human eye. It's simply a compression or decompression of space between two terminal points. So while we uh, ponder upon what uh, energy really is, there is something that all scientists do agree upon and that is that energy is constant, uh, it can never be destroyed, it can never be created. In other words, when you hold a rock in your hand or you measure the background uh, radiation of uh, space uh, outside the Earth, it uh, has always been that way, or at least it came from some existing place. There's nothing new that's being created when you swipe a magnetic field across a conductor to generate electricity like in an electric generator or when you uh, light a match to a piece of wood to generate some uh, fire and cook your dinner. Uh, that's just a conversion of energy from one form to the other. There's no new energy created and it's always balancing out. If you add up all the new energy that's being released from the energy that's stored, it's always balancing out. And this leads us into the topic of free energy devices. And there's nothing magic about it. Uh, basically, it means the internal energy from a system that's available to do work. It doesn't mean some uh, hocus pocus, uh, weird uh, pseudoscience definition of energy produced out of nothing, like a perpetual motion machine. That's not what free energy originally means. Free energy just means the internal energy of a system that's available to do work. Even uh, Professor Einstein uh, said that uh, energy is basically equal to the mass of matter multiplied by a constant. And um, he also then uh, implicitly says that there is no new energy and energy is not created. It's just being converted from mass 
to energy or vice versa. So this is a very simple test or a question. You can ask the uh, energy inventor that uh, you see on the internet and claims to have invented a perpetual motion machine. Where is the energy coming from? Well, if he d just doesn't know, that's one thing. But if he claims that it's uh, from the vacuum, you better take a very close look to see if it actually is true. So far, nobody has invented a device to convert the uh, energy from our universe background radiation into mechanical or electrical energy, except there is uh, some small indications from some experiments uh, called the Kashmir effect, and the energy from that device is so small it's, uh, uh, you know, be almost close to zero, but uh, it, it doesn't mean that it can't be done, it just means that you need to apply some normal rules of logic, which is energy always comes from somewhere. And now we get to the practical bonus section of this video, and you will see how to build some uh, inexpensive free energy devices at home with ordinary household materials. The first experiment is just to hammer two dissimilar metals into the ground. In my case I used uh, an iron nail and an aluminum tent stake. And sure enough, as you can see on the voltmeter, I measured 0.35 volts. So I then decided to put the experiment with the metal rods in a plastic flower pot. It's not connected to the ground and I wanted to eliminate the possibility that there were some earth currents and I also rotated the flower pot to eliminate the possibility that the earth magnetic field was having an influence on this experiment and it looks like it did not and we got about the same voltage so encouraged by the initial results of uh, nails in the ground I decided to sift some uh, earth and put it into a glass container on the bottom I have a brass uh, metal foil and I'm putting a zinc metal foil on top and then I'm uh, using a brick to kind of push down on the top zinc foil And as you will see in a second, I get about uh, up to 300 millivolts or 0.3 volts. It's jumping around a bit, but uh, it's definitely uh, above uh, 0.25 volts. Of course, you could expect uh, much greater results if you used a grounding rod, 8-foot grounding rod similar to what is used by the electrical utility companies here in California. Then I decided to get even more creative and just use water, do away with the dirt and uh, put some uh, rock salt in the water, just ordinary tap water. And I have a piece of uh, a copper wire and a galvanized uh, screw and you just drop it into the water and let's see what we get. And it looks like we're getting 0.85 volts. Not bad for some water. And then I did away with the rock salt and I just uh, used some ordinary tap water and no ingredients at all in the water. And I got 0.85 volts again. Then we can try and see what a fruit and the juice will do to making a battery. Very similar to the Baghdad battery that is believed to be more than 2,000 years old, they probably put some juice in there and they found uh, two metal electrodes. On a very similar principle, we can uh, put together a little citrus here with a copper metal stuck into it and a galvanized screw on the other side. And we can even try a copper penny 
and connect to a galvanized screw and we get 0.9 volts again. Now all the previous free energy devices have a small problem. The amount of output power is very low and you need to move into something like a solar cell to get a true practical free energy device. Now I could have made this video with a fake free energy device, perhaps uh, put some batteries in the light socket or drill the hole underneath the device or underneath the lemon and put two wires through a small thin hole. But that's not my mission. My mission is to educate and I want to show you and teach you that free energy is all around us and it's just a matter of applying some engineering skills and perhaps some creativity to create lots of free energy. The point I'm trying to make with this video is that there is free energy all around us and just stay away from the big claims that you might see on YouTube if you type in perpetual motion. Of course we know there is no such thing. You don't get energy for nothing so to speak. There is free energy and it's all around us but these uh, perpetual motion machines that you see on YouTube are just money-making scams. Uh, if you figure they make about uh, two, two dollars per thousand views on their video, these uh, YouTube creators are making about two thousand dollars for a million views. So this guy here with uh, 24 million views, uh, you can pretty much estimate he made $48,000 from this one video alone. And this second video here, which, uh, I mean, that's just a bicycle wheel, a very easy to make, and probably a hairdryer on the side out of the frame of the video, driving this uh, wheel by just uh, pure wind. Uh, he has um, uh, 11 million views, so he probably made around 22 million uh, thousand dollars and the reason I know what these guys make is I used to work in the online marketing business for many years so I know roughly what uh, what can be earned from making YouTube videos and uh, let's click on this guy here it's just a joke really it's so simple he can uh, easily make this and then have a hair dryer blowing some wind on the upper or lower side of the wheel here. So my point is uh, there's free energy all the way around everywhere and uh, you just have to get creative and um, think outside the box and you might be able to come up with a real free energy machine. Of course it won't be perpetual motion but It'll probably help some people and generate free energy. If you like the content of this video, please press the subscribe button, the red icon in the lower corner. And step two, press the bell icon and then click all. This will uh, give you an email notification each time we make a new video.